back here at the University of Dubuque for our Fox News Town Hall with Kirsten Gillibrand. Senator, time for a lightning round. Quick questions and quick answers. Uh, as we sit here now, the, the qualifications to get on the stage for that first debate are you have to be at 1% and I think three polls, and you have to have 65,000 individual donors. I guess it's or, not and. As we sit here tonight, do you qualify for the first debate? I qualify on polling, and to guarantee my spot, I need to get a few more donors. So if you like what you heard, KirstenGillibrand.com. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you mad at the DNC? Sorry? Why are you mad at the DNC? Oh, I'm going to play by the rules. Um, I just have to work much harder, and I'm going to keep taking this campaign to every voter all across Iowa, all across the other states, and I'm having a blast. You attend Bible study and a prayer breakfast every week. And yep. Briefly, I know this is not a lightning round kind of question, though. Give us a sense of how your faith guides you in your public life. Yeah. So um, I was born Catholic and raised Catholic, but in my adult life, I've really uh, focused on my faith as what centers me, centers my uh, reason for doing public service. I feel like I am here to serve others, to make a difference in people's lives. It's why I'm running for president. Um, I am someone who looks to my faith to strengthen me. Um, and going to those couple of Bible studies a week is the best time I spend with my colleagues. Um, I have two with a number of Republican colleagues and a couple Democrats. And then the prayer breakfast is non-denominational. But it's a way for us to have this common ground of our faith, but also to just center and strengthen everything that I do. It, it's, it's, it's why I do public service. I feel like I'm given this chance to be on this earth, and it's to help others. And it's to fight the battles that other people won't take on the causes that other people won't, and go through fire to do what's right. Well, speaking about going through fire, you arm wrestled a voter here in Iowa. I think we have the video of it, if we can put it up on the screen. And, well, let's just say, oh, that's not the one. I, no, I'm not going to arm wrestle you, you crazy. I, I thought about that, and I thought the possibility of national humiliation was, you know what, we'll do it off camera afterwards. But here's the question. Did she really, because there was one where you beat her, and then in the second one, she beat you. Was it really, did she throw the first one? Oh, no. No, that was a death match. <laughs> it was real. We were both crying. It hurt badly. <laughs> Other than that, what's the silliest thing you have done on the campaign trail? Um, well, that was pretty much there. Um, uh... You know, I've been having such a good time. I got to tell you, Chris, the more I travel in this country, the more I know how much I love America and how important this race is. I, I think if we have four more years of President Trump, we won't recognize this country. Um, just the division and the hate and the darkness that has been spread is real. And people are anxious about the future. And so I feel lucky that I have a chance to travel around this country and experience enormous amounts of fun. The most fun I've had was going to a drag show, and I bought a very pretty dress to bring to the uh, event, and it looked so good on the drag queen, I gave it to her. So um, <laughs> it was wonderful. Um, so I don't know, does that count, qualify as the future is female or not? I'm not quite sure on that one. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what gender identity is all about, Chris. I'm getting an education tonight. Uh, you have two kids, correct? Yes. How old are they? Henry is 11 and Theo is 15. So how tough is it to be on the campaign trail? And how, as I know you are a very concerned mom, how do you connect with them, oftentimes long distance? Uh, phone. We do a, a phone call every night and every morning. Um, but before I decided to run for president, uh, the most important conversation I did have was with my children and my husband. And we decided as a family that this was a sacrifice that they were willing to make for the good of the country. And imagine the courage in an 11-year-old boy when he says, Mommy, you were meant to do this. You need to do this. And you need to fight really hard. And it's OK. I'll be OK. And not being home on a Saturday when I'd normally be watching his uh, baseball match or his soccer game, um, that's Henry's sacrifice, because he would have me watching him. And he knows how important this is. And so for my family, for my husband and I, we just know that, you know, God puts us all here for a reason. And if you are willing to serve others, if you are willing to put others first, if you are willing to do the hard thing, then you should. 
And so we as a family decided to do it. We have 45 seconds left before we give you a closing statement. Is there one moment in all your months on the campaign trail that stands out for you? Um, let's see. I've been most inspired by the number of little girls that I've seen on the campaign trail who uh, are so excited about the future. They have six women running for president. And I think they can see themselves in those, in those women. And what I'm so proud of at this moment is that so many people across America are showing their bravery every day. They are speaking out, speaking up, fighting back, marching. And that's what inspires me. And it's what allows me to fight harder every day. So it's the young families, it's the parents, it's the kids who want a better life for this country, who want to have a slice of the American dream. And I'm going to do that for them. We have now basically run out of time, but we'd like to give you the chance for a closing statement. Senator, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, University of Dubuque, for welcoming me. Um, this has been a huge honor and privilege. Uh, I really appreciated the chance to tell you about my vision, and I want to thank you for having such a wonderful town hall, really on substance. It really does make a difference. Um, but I really believe this election is about President Trump has really degraded our democracy and he's degraded our country, uh, mostly because he has spewed a level of lies and hate and division that's harming the moral fabric of the country, harming us to our core. And I believe that this country deserves a president who's strong, a president who's brave, a president who will do the right things. As president of the United States, I am going to fight for those people who feel so deeply left behind, women, children, minorities. I'm going to make sure that people know that they have a voice in me. And I know that as president, I can bring this country together. I can bring this country to do what's right, to do what is needed, to have all the things that families want, they just want to know that their kids can have a slice of the American dream. And that's why I'm running for president, and that's why I'm going to win. Thank you, Senator Gillibrand. Thank you to our audience here in Dubuque. And that's it for tonight. Uh, join us next Sunday for Fox News Sunday. Senator, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.